As I said at the top of the program, dangerous criminal vandals have defaced two statues in Melbourne on the eve of Australia Day. The coward struck in the middle of the night, in fact at 3.30 this morning, hacking down the statue of Captain Cook in St Kilda and spray painting a Queen Victoria statue near the Botanical Gardens. Now tomorrow, I'm predicting, is going to be the most disruptive Australia Day this nation has ever seen, led by the radical left green anti-Australian activists. And already New South Wales police have announced huge numbers will be out in force. No word, by the way, on what the Victoria police might do in Melbourne. David Southwick is the deputy opposition leader in Victoria and joins me now. I see the uh, Premier, Jacinda Allen, said that the police must uh, act quickly. You wonder why they didn't act more quickly last night. How do you describe, David, what, you, what we all witnessed uh, over the early hours of this morning? Oh, quite frankly, Steve, it's appalling, it's un-Australian. And if people are turning to vandalism to demonstrate their beliefs, then their beliefs have absolutely no currency here in Australia. Uh, it is appalling to think that individuals would desecrate a national monument like this on the eve of Australia Day. But what's more to this, this is not something attacking just Australia Day. This is attacking Australia because what they want to see is Australia fail. And ultimately, these people are fools. But more than that, these people should have the full force of the law thrown at them. Because if we allow this behaviour to continue, they're going to continue to re-offend again and again and again. And the only way to stop, stop these individuals from committing these offences is to ensure that they are held accountable for their actions and police step in. This went to a new level, didn't it? I mean, we've seen uh, the Queen Victoria statue in particular vandalised before. There's been various other statues that have been daubed with red paint. But to take out an angle, an angle grinder, uh, and it must have taken, you know, 10, 15 minutes to do this, uh, and the noise that that would have created, that's gone to a, a completely different level. And, and we're, in the, we're in the hands here of some very dangerous people. Yeah, look, I mean, if people are, are, are turning to angle grinders to take down statues, what's next? Uh, you, you're absolutely right on the money, Steve. The fact that police didn't get there in a timely manner, the fact that this was allowed to happen, there needs to be a full investigation. The statue needs to be returned back to its original state immediately. Uh, the government should step in. And I know we keep having this debate around Australia Day, uh, if Labor want to change Australia Day, then they should simply do so and say so and not hide behind this kind of stuff. I mean, I'm sick as a proud Australian of having been made to feel guilty for celebrating our National Day. It's a great day. We have a rich history of people that have come to this country or people from Indigenous background that we all need to live together and celebrate what makes Australia great. Uh, the fact that so many councils at the moment will not be celebrating a citizenship ceremony, which I know so many citizens that have come to this country value doing that on Australia Day because it is such an important thing for them. Uh, I know that uh, this particular action is vandalism. It has no place in Australia. It's un-Australian. And I think what we need now is consequences because it's a slippery slope, Steve. You and I have spoken about this kind of thing before. Uh, we can't have a situation where people can get away with this. I mean, quite frankly, you can think of so many other things that people might have an attack on and you'd have police stepping in, the government stepping in straight away. This is history that these vandals, these fools, want to erase. They want to completely rewrite history and we must not uh, let them win because ultimately this is so important to us. It's a rich part of our fabric. We should be celebrating Australia Day. I know tomorrow I will be wearing my Australia Day tie, which I've been doing for 13 years as a Member of Parliament, attending citizenship ceremonies and celebrating with a Barbie like others. People will choose to do and celebrate Australia Day in so many different ways. Let's do that. Let's be proud Australians, but, let, 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 but let's not allow these fools to win. And police must step in, there must be consequences and the statue must be resurrected. Congratulations on the tie, that's a great gesture. Uh, what the, one of the things that worries me, these fools are encouraged because they, what they do is they then 
uh, shame uh, councils like the Melbourne City Council and the Victorian State Labor Government into dropping Australia Day events. Now, we live in Melbourne and tomorrow there'll be nothing. There'll be no parade down, uh, down Swanson Street as there used to be to the Shrine, no multicultural parade. Council dropped that, government dropped that. They used COVID as an excuse, but it's never come back since COVID. Uh, there's nothing happening here. I think there's some minor event that takes place in Federation Square and that's just about it. That's pathetic from a city that is about to become Australia's biggest city. Well, again, um, you're absolutely right. There are so many, particularly uh, new Australians that come here and are just amazed that we don't hold in such high esteem our National Day. Uh, they do it in so many other countries, yet Australia, we're in a situation in Melbourne, uh, it becomes a situation where people, unfortunately, are made to feel guilty for celebrating it. I know that over the last few years, and I'll do it again at some stage tomorrow, drop into Government House, which is open for the public to attend. And it is, so, it, it is such a celebration there because you have people, again, largely from different countries, different nationalities, that embrace it, that celebrate it. You've got brass bands, you've got them sit playing tunes and everything else. That shouldn't be confined just to Government House. That should be the kind of thing that should be on every street, in every suburb, right across the state, right across the country. And I think we've lost sight in what's important. People can find different ways to acknowledge it. It is our national day, but the government can't keep making excuses because at the end of the day, that's our day. If they want to change it, then they should go about doing it. But we have this argument each and every year leading up to our national day, and unfortunately, we're left with nothing. And it's got to change. It's got to change. We've got to be able to be proud, to celebrate our national day, and understand what a wonderful contribution so many have made right across the board, whether it be Indigenous, whether it be people, people from multicultural backgrounds, people that have been here a number of generations. That is what has made our great country so great. We should be celebrating that. This is the best country in the world. We should not be ashamed of it. We should be out and about on this important day, Australia Day, and celebrating Australia for what it is. Good on you. I'll let you get out of the rain. David Southwick there, Deputy Opposition Leader in Victoria.